prostitution is basically legal. When you really think about it, um, the definition of what people would think, um, for example, say you take a woman out to a dinner and a movie, right? So you spend, um, say, like $100 on the dinner and the movie together, and um, then you take her to your house or your apartment or wherever afterwards, and you guys have sex. Well, what's the difference of just giving her $100 in cash? I mean, it's just like, so you're just basically, uh, you're basically adding this middleman um, of just like, of whether it's like a dinner or a movie or um, whatever you guys decide to do, like go a road trip, um, whatever the date is, you know, the formal date where she can put on her makeup, her high heels, um, you can sit down, talk about your day talk about your life going forward so how have you been how have you been how's work anything new uh, what are your hobbies and it's just like so you go through that uh process and then when you uh, are finished with the date then you go home and have sex with her anyways but you're paying for it regardless you're paying for it somehow you're 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 not getting it for free right you're paying it with uh money or you're using that money to um provide a date or an experience maybe like a restaurant a movie or you're um you're paying for it with your physical attractiveness with your personality with your knowledge your intelligence um your spiritual understanding uh your vibe with her what you can provide according to her perspective right because you you got to provide something you can't just have absolutely nothing going on like you could take um everything of the subjective negative the subjective bad and you could uh create this archetype of that so you could say like the really short fat out of shape homeless um no confidence um no job broke in debt um mean aggressive violent abusive like you could just <laughs> create like this list of just like what someone would think is like the subjective uh negatives the subjective bads and uh create this uh character of a guy and that guy is not getting anything, right? So you're paying for it somehow, right? The transaction of how we do things, just even in the economy, not even just um, relationships, men and women, but just how we operate in the economy. It's like an exchange of goods. I have something to offer. You have something to offer. Let's trade or let's work together on something. Let's uh, create. Let's create a project. Um, work towards some kind of goal, or like even. Like sitting down to like discuss what we're doing, discussing a philosophy, discussing like a better uh, route we can take with um, a law or society or just um, a certain group of people and the direction they're going, right? So like even just um, day to day living, there's this uh, there's this fifty fifty, there's this trade off, right? So you're paying for it regardless. So just because they can make a law that says you can't pay a woman for sex. You're paying a woman for sex. I mean, you're, you're paying for it somehow. You know, like it could be like in the social media era. Oh, look at me. I've got um, millions of followers. And so like to, like a girl thinks that you're like of high social status. You're popular. Other people like you. Other people follow you. So you're using that as payment, right? Like you're, 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 uh, you're paying either way. Like for, for some, uh, for some reason and some uh example there's like an exchange of payment there so um this idea that it's illegal yeah it's illegal in the sense of the transaction of i take this hundred dollar bill and go hand it to a woman and then that's the exact exchange like here's the hundred dollar bill we have sex that part is illegal but if i take that one hundred dollar bill take her to a nice restaurant where uh each of our meals are like 30 to $40 each, and then we each get a drink. And so the, like with the tip, it ends up being like $100. And so then after the dinner, we just go back to my place and do it anyways. It's like, you're just here adding a middleman. You know, who's to say that I can't just give her cash? What, like, why even have the middleman? If it's just like, I'm not, I'm not suggesting to go out and do anything illegal or to, um, to, uh, I'm not condoning uh, prostitution, and I'm not saying that it's necessarily a good choice for the woman to even do. But um, also, too, going on that note, I'm not of the opinion that uh, because a woman decides to be a prostitute or a porn star or um, any sort of path that uh, someone would think is immoral, 
I don't necessarily, even though I don't advise her to do that um, necessarily, uh, I think there are other options that would be more beneficial for her um, spiritually and just mentally, psychologically, physically, just long term. But if she decides to do that and become that porn star, become that prostitute, I don't necessarily just think that's like so much more immoral than the woman who like demands that I have um, my uh, my life together to the point where I'm taking her out on expensive dinners and you know I'm selling tie dye right now as my job for this nonprofit and if I don't have a hundred dollars to spend on one dinner and she's just allowed to say like oh well okay you don't provide what this other guy does so she goes on the date with him I don't see that as like any more uh, moral than the girl that's just like goes into um, the porn industry or prostitution like I, I don't uh, I don't have that judgment on like that was the more immoral choice versus this woman who put on makeup and high heels and she's got a nice expensive dress on and you see her in a nightclub wow that is that's a dime right there like that is if you don't get her I mean then you're just a loser like like who are like who are you if you you know to be in the presence of her like wow look at that girl in the club with like it just like doesn't matter girl at a bar girl at a club girl in the park um, whatever her career is her uh, her age, her place in life, her political views, her religion, like, all of that is just so, uh, like, off the point. And so, um, when you really think about it, prostitution is legal. I mean, there's an exchange of payment, there's an exchange of goods, there's an exchange of services, there's a trade of value. And it might not, not, might not even be real value, well, depending on what we're calling real value, because that's subjective, but um, it can be someone's perceived value. Right, you can perceive something as valuable um, based on how you're seeing it when you look at it closer and there's not really much value there. So like I said before with the uh, like the follower count thing, like you have like an Instagram or a Facebook or YouTube, Twitter, whatever, and you're like a celebrity or something, you got millions of followers, that's perceived value, right? So I mean, in one sense, yeah, like if you use that following to like build a business and now you're making more money and with that money you're able to afford a more comfortable lifestyle, more food, healthier food, um, and get a roof over your head, yes, that perceived value can also bring things of real substantial value, but the idea of just you have a number on a phone screen of this many people follow it, and so that's some value, or that's like some high uh, social status guy, that's just such an illusion, that that's its perceived value, so that's why, um, you know, it's kind of like the, uh, the celebrity feel that someone has where uh, they're looking at someone like oh my god this person's famous they got millions of dollars millions of followers and then they see them in public or uh, or whatever and it's like oh my god that's the, who that person is and if they get to know the person um, more than that one interaction they just start to notice oh like it's a human being we're all equal there's no difference there's no levels there's no hierarchy because now they're seeing the person more than just the snapshot of um, millions of followers or millions of dollars or um, this person's car this person's two-story house versus that person's apartment versus that person on the street right there's a a lot of this out here is perceived value based on uh, the intelligence of the person perceiving it the experiences of that person um, the genetics the culture they were raised in like a lot of things uh, lead to a point that shapes someone's current mindset so um, it's like, uh, I don't if anyone's ever seen um, that meme where about different perspectives where there's um, a six drawn on the ground and uh, one person's on one side of the six and one person's on the other side of the six. Well, from this person's side, they're seeing six, but if you go to the other side, that person's seeing nine. Because from their perspective, like if you think about it, you draw a six on the ground, you're looking at it straight ahead, that's a six, but then you go from the other side, oh, now it, that's reversed, that's the nine, so who's right? So was it drawn as a six, or was it drawn as a nine? What was the intention of how it was drawn? You don't know if you're not the person who uh, took that chalk and like drew it on the concrete, you don't know like how the person drew it, right? So you're only seeing it from your perspective, and that's just kind of how um, I'm relating that to what, what people think is perceived value versus real value is um, it, it depends on what side you're looking at it from. It depends on uh, your experiences in life that even shape your current mindset because like uh, even two twins, you separate them at birth, 
uh, put one in California, one in Alaska, they're going to be different as adults. You know, they're biological twins. They're identical twins, but I mean, just that those are two different climates, two different geographies. Like, it's just like uh, they're going to be different people, different experiences that shape different mindsets and uh, personality traits, quirks, thoughts, all of that. So um, going back to this uh, concept of prostitution basically being legal, um, it, you know, we, we kind of uh, we say it in a way like, oh, well, that's bad and immoral and it's illegal to take this cash and to hand the girl money for sex. And I get the idea behind it, you know, we we're trying to put some sort of um, structure in the society, some sort of moral, some sort of law based on how we're describing that. And um, if our culture completely goes to a point where every single guy is just taking cash and goes, here's your cash, have sex with me. Yeah, like that has repercussions going forward. So um, there's a reason why it's illegal. There's a reason. But I mean, you know, that's based on who's running the show anyways and why they make things legal and illegal. Like, why is it illegal here in California, but then in Vegas it's legal? You know, I mean, it's like, um, even I talked about in the Age of Consent video that I did, um, California, it's 18. Nevada, it's 16. Is it really that immoral if you do something here in California and she's 16? It's consensual, but it's moral in Nevada because they said so, like another human being sanctified it. I mean, you know, it, everything's a gray area. And so um, growing up and becoming more mature, you cannot just take your uh, entire worldview on, well, the, the mayor said, or like the governor said, or the president said, or this news station said, or my specific family said, my culture said, my religion said. I mean, there's more going on here. So even something uh, like a video like this, prostitution is basically legal. You know, someone just get like from their... Um, prior experience with it of always being told no that's illegal they just get triggered by it and go like how dare you have that view of women or how dare you call all women prostitutes but it's just like you just you're not getting you're not getting my uh my reasoning behind it if you're not like watching the whole video seeing my point right you just like someone gets triggered on like a title or the way you look or maybe they're having a bad day they see you smiling and so they're like well how come this person's happy you know like just the way humans are in general just like everything's a reflection everything um like triggers them everything is like something that annoys them or something they don't have something they don't do so um something like this they might not understand what i'm saying with it but um you're you're paying for it regardless you know whether you give her the hundred dollars um directly i mean i've never i've never done this i've never broken the law and gone into prostitution but i have taken women on dates so um you know the guy that gives her a hundred dollar bill and they have sex yeah he could go to jail but I take that $100 bill, go to an expensive restaurant, um, and then we have sex after. And then if that dinner was um, all I could afford at the time, like I can't just spend $100 every night on dinner for her. So now my finances start to dry up, so she leaves me and goes with another guy with more money. So that was moral for me to do or okay. But if that guy just cut the middleman and said, here's the $100, let's have sex now, he's going to jail because um, some piece of paper said so within the government and they made it a law. So really, when you really think about it, there's always an exchange of goods. You're paying for it either way, whether that's your looks, your money, uh, personality, something you provide her that another guy doesn't provide. You're paying for it either way. If you have nothing, you're not getting anything from her. So when you look at it, prostitution, it's basically legal.